turn. You're gonna put. You're gonna turn it sideways. Turn it sideways. But turn the back facing. Stick it in okay. this uh, Assalamualaikum wa wa We apologize for the lateness and all the technical difficulties. Uh, as you know, uh, my YouTube recently got a strike on it. To, to um, adjust. So that's why we have to go to the From mirror side. You can look and see. If I'm I'm right. So we're with the shake right now. He's just getting himself set up and together. Inshallah. So make sure you, make you like, subscribe, share. Him. Make sure you share, you share this camera, link. Sorry, you gotta, uh, for for the uh, the huh? loyal followers of the features channel, you, you can still now? support the features channel, but we want you to you subscribe, me subscribe yeah. to. Yeah. yeah. The uh, infamous features as well, because okay, this is the mirror now, site. Give me that mic shake. Because we cannot actually uh, put any material on the main site due to the strike of YouTube, right? So until we get that sorted out, okay, hopefully it'll be sorted out in, in a couple of days. We'll be uh, running events on the mirror site, inshallah. Right? So as you can see the shake is getting set up here we do apologize for the lateness and we do apologize for uh all the technical difficulties but we are <laughs> we are good to go inshallah he'll be a, we'll be able to hear him i don't know a little bit better well umar's not here can you hear me uh Bilal? we hear you good inshallah we hear you good alhamdulillah can you hear me yes i can hear you alhamdulillah alhamdulillah hey, all right <laughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, salatu wa salam ala rasulhi al-kareem, himna adhu wa ala alihi wa ashabi wa salam al taslim al kithira, shidhu an la ilaha illallah, wa ahdahu la shibhika la, wa ashadu anna muhammadin abduhu wa rasuluhu, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa salam al taslim al kithira amma ba'd. I want to apologize for the delay mashallah and Allah is sufficient for us in all circumstances so we are here alhamdulillah and ask Allah to guide us to a guided and a directed way and Ask Allah to make us sincere and pure in our statements and actions. Ask Allah to bless us to benefit from the knowledge that He departs to us in the whole Jawad al Kareem, in the whole Allah Kulli Shayin Qadir Mabar. This um, is a very important topic. Um, Wallahi, is the cameras okay? Yeah, we're good. Okay, yeah. Wallahi, uh, Bilal, astaghfirullah, from the time we sent the flyer out, mm. people blowing up my phone who normally don't even contact me mm. <laughs> because they want to have something to say. Yes. Got some emotions. Why mm. talking about the shake? Somebody mm. else, Wallah, most of for my brothers, man, they still talking about that. Allah mm. most okay, so we already mm. see the need for this type of topic just from those responses. Now nah. and I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a benefit because it is something that is long overdue. And it's not to um, create fitna mm. or to rehash old wounds. Neither is it what they like to politically say show that we don't respect the scholars or we have a problem with the scholars. No, we're dealing with what the Prophet wasallam told Abdullah, speak the truth even if it be once in your life. Work together mutually upon what's good and righteousness and do not work together upon sin and transgression. So the origin of this was stemming back to a talk, as you know, Bilal and did in Jersey City. And the mm -hmm. talk was supposed to be about brotherhood. And there were a lot of, as we like to say, OGs in the house or mm -hmm. Muslims from back in the day and their 60s and 70s that understood 
to just what we were doing and just what we were talking about. And in that talk, I talked about the history of East Orange and Newark going back to the 90s up to the whole present time that we're in. And some people from amongst those brothers in that masjid were part of the Rabia effect, as you named it. Yes. And they felt like they needed to say something because obviously speaking, we weren't saying the Sheikh, Sheikh Rabia, Hafid of Allah, or we weren't saying the Dawah to Salafi, and we were talking about brotherhood. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about the wounds that were still you know, I mean, oozing with pus and blood. We were talking about what to do, the aftermath of this great, horrible, rendendous event. So mm -hmm. the brother asked the question about what do you say about people, you know, I mean, as it relates to Shikarabia, his status, and how he should be respected. And you know the rest of the question and the answers you made a reactionary video. So this yep. is uh, kind of like a part two. And I'll mm -hmm. let you, um, as this is your show, um, start by asking or whatever you want to direct concerning this issue. Well, first of all, Sheikh, we thank you. We thank you so much for your time. And, uh, you know, we're very honored to have you here to talk about this particular topic. Now, my personal uh, opinion is that this is not an organic um, uh, event that happened in the black community with regards to Sheikh Rabia and what happened with that whole um, Salafi Publications uh, click. I, I personally believe that this is something that was planned because the, these events have happened time and time again in the black community. And it is a carbon copy, a cut and paste model of what's happened in the past. Right. So, uh, what we see, what we see happen with our our black leaders in the past, for example, Marcus Garvey, and how he got infiltrated by by the FBI, and then you have you know the Nation of Islam before the Malcolm X Martin. It's all this copy paste event when the Salafi Dao was growing and spreading in the '90s, and people were coming out of the gutter. You know, they were changing, little, legit changing their lives, and they were legit. Um, you know, like uh, climbing out of the abyss of of um, of uh, you know, what's what's the word I'm looking for? Man? This this the, these types of lifestyles that we have. You know, they're making themselves better. You know what I mean? We saw this happening. Salafis were changing uh, the entire landscape of the black community, and then they weren't. Right. So I would I would like to get your opinion of that of what was happening, what it was like in the beginning before we had foreigners come and telling us what to do and what, and then we saw something completely different in the black community. Now, uh, the first thing I want to say before I mention in regards to what you just asked of me, people want to say, this is nationalism. Why are they talking about this? This is not the Aqidah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi warned against Qawmiyyah. And he Qawmiyyah in layman's terms, you know, being with your people. Somebody's going to say, oh, this is his view. They're talking about the Sheikh. These people are not from the people of the Sunnah. Somebody's going to say, oh, this is Asabiya, nationalism, because they're talking about the black community. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the Quran he talks about all of the prophets and messengers and they unanimously said, yeah, call me, all my people. Mm -hmm. They were prophets and messengers. Mm -hmm. Is anyone going to say the prophets and messengers were bigots or they were nationalistic or they were people that were not on the proper aqid or menhaj? Is this thinkable for someone to uh, uh, imagine that type of statement? Mm -hmm. The prophet himself, sallallahu alayhi he was sent to the Arabs. Many ayahs yep. Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned the Quran being revealed for Lisan al Arabi al Mubin in the clear mm -hmm. Arabic language. And when the Prophet went to Qa'if, which is not that far from Mecca, a small town, and went there to preach to the people. 
because every people want good for their people, even if they're doing something wrong, but they perceive it to be right. They don't want to give it to their people. That's natural. So the prophet went for what he knew was what was right. The da'wah of Islam, the da'wah of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Yeah. And then this event, he was reciting from the Quran, preaching to them, and they bust them in the mouth. Mm. When they hit him in the mouth, Abdullah bin Mas'ud said blood ran down the side of his cheek. He said, I could envision this like it was yesterday in the narration. Mm. Jibril appeared and he said, oh, Muhammad, he said, if you want, Allah has given me the permission. We'll turn these mountains over on these people to punish them for what they have just did of rejecting the message and harming you. You know what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, Allahumma, Allahumma, <clears throat> la yu'adhibu qawmin, la, la yu'adhibu qawmi, oh Allah do not punish my people, la yu'adhibu, la yu'adhibu qawmi, that ya in the end, they said in the Arabic language, hadha ya udifa ila mutakallim, Meaning it shows relevancy to the one who's speaking. It connects the one who's speaking to that object. And that object was called men, people. He said, mm -hmm. oh Allah, do not punish my people. For in the home, la ya lamun, Because they don't know no better. Mm -hmm. He said, perhaps it will come from them later on. People that worship you. Now you look, part it is totally Muslim. Like the rest of the Arabians. Like the rest of the kingdom. So what's the point? It is very unfortunate. It is very historical. And it is very primitive of this self-hatred that people will come to us. Nobody yeah. from amongst the rest of the people denies their people. The Yemenis are with their people. The Palestinians are with their people. The Egyptians are with their people. The Sudanese are with their people. The Pakistanis, the Indians, the Bangladeshis, they're with their people. The people from Ghana are with their people. The people from Gambia, which we just came back, are with their people. Everybody's with their people. And nobody says they're national, nationalistic. As soon mm. as we say our people, there it goes. The indictment. Exactly. Exactly. So the first thing I want to say is that that's a real reality. And it mm. does not take us any further from the Quran and Sunnah than the Muslim who has to heed and he is a sinner. It still keeps you in the fold of Islam. Mm -hmm. And so that's the first thing that they use to divide us, disconnect us from our people. That da'wah, they're not your people, we're your people. Yes, the Muslims are our people. Mm -hmm. But as a racial group, as a ethnic group, as a people of generational oppression and color, in the same types of neighborhoods and lands that we all share, there are people. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, we know that the history, at least in the Americas, we know the history in South, Central, Northern America, they've never wanted the Blacks to unite upon anything. And mm -hmm. they've always used government yeah, any um, agents, provocateurs, they Agencies. always use those people that are on the inside against you to stop that type of progress, whether it was in the church, whether it was with yep. some civil rights movements, whether it was mm -hmm. with uh, national uh, 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 listed groups for black mm -hmm. power, whether it was with any group, including the Muslims, now upon Islam and the Sunnah. They always mm -hmm. have a plan for marginalism and to keep us divided. So this is not mm -hmm. a conspiracy theory when we talk about um, how we know, not we think, but how we know that the government mm -hmm. was involved in this whole fiasco of dividing and stopping what we were doing in the 90s. Mm -hmm. No doubt. In my opinion, no doubt. And not only that, if you look at CIA documents, they will tell you straight up about Sheikh Rabia in CIA documents. 
They will tell you, yes, we like his, his methodology, we like his messaging, and we were going to support him. And they mentioned by name the Medacula in the CIA documents. Look it up right now. It's public information, Bilal. It's Wallahi. public information. Wallahi, if you go back to when Al Haj Malik Shabazz was killed, may Allah have mercy on his soul, forgive him for shortcomings and give him paradise. I mean, and make the fruits of his blood that was spilt that day something that you will be raised with as a shaheed on the day of judgment. I mean, and bless from amongst us more like him. And somebody will say, but the prophet is our example. True that. Mm -hmm. He's our example from the statement of Allah in the Quran for the can left of Rasulullah Usfutul Hasana. There is a great example, the best example for you and the message of Allah. Allah Ta'ala has mentioned that the Prophet in that small ayah, at least four or five ways Allah emphasized his magnificent character. How could he not be? A role model for us. But again, people don't look outside the box. We were taught to be inside of the box. And mm -hmm. that's not being in touch with reality because the Prophet Sallam, he also mentioned Al Mara'u ala Dini Khalili. A person mm -hmm. is upon the way. Deen here means way. Ala mm Dini -hmm. Khalili. He's on the habits of the one. That he's Khalil. Khalil means that he's around most of the time. And that's why the Prophet gave the solution. He said, Look at who you take as a friend. Mm -hmm. So, what's the point? We need human physical role models to the day we die. We look at the Prophet as the primary example, we look at his companions as examples, and that's not in every situation. Because there are some things the companions did were outside of what was the text. And that's because they're human, not because we want to target them or defame them. So obviously speaking, we don't follow them in that. But you need physical role models. That's why the issue of being upright, that's why the issue of you know, setting examples and watching what you say and do, all of this is a part of Islam because you need physical role models. So that being the case, that physical role model, we have to have that in our community. We have to have some type of image to encourage us to keep doing the right thing because there's an issue of textbook and then there's the issue of taking the textbook and making it live. Exactly. Application. When she was asked, what is the character of the prophet? She said, His character was that of the Quran, meaning you can see it. So we need those role models. So if we go back to the issue of Malcolm X, we, we see the government was very instrumental in that uh, assassination. They had the foul mm -hmm. of the gun slinger, the shotgun man, all of this, everybody seen in the documentary of the Rahman put together. May Allah bless him and uh, mm -hmm. give him. Um, a great reward for that. But there's, we don't need that video or that movie I need to say that's true or false. This is history. So yep. when we talk about that, if we fast forward to our case, I want to take you back to when Sheikh al muqbil rahimahullah ta'ala, he was in the uh, 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 kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. The Sheikh, yani, in short, went to the kingdom to work because he was poor. He left Dammaj, which was in mm -hmm. Yemen, to work very poor. Mm -hmm. The sheikh returned back to Yemen to give some dawah. They forced him to go back to the Shia school. They said he's mm -hmm. brainwashed. He has this <laughs> Wahhabiya with him. So they forced mm -hmm. him back in the school. They said, either you, yani, be quiet, that's what they told him. He said, mm -hmm. oh, yani, sa, sa or we're going to put you in the jail. So the sheikh was forced to go back to that school and he studied only the Arabic language because by this time he understood, he said, he couldn't study anything else that they had because it was falsehood. Mm -hmm. The sheikh studied high level of Arabic, 
which made him a scholar in the Arabic language. Then he went back to the, the, the Mamlaka. As a, uh, a young sheikh in Saudi Arabia, he was the sheikh of Alum uh, al-Hadith, the science of Hadith, and the Arabic language. And you had an incident where one of the people by the name of Juhayman, Juhayman was a person who was a radical. He was a person of bid'ah. He was a person of hamiya, yani mutahamis. He was yani one of those people that was fiery and you know he was you know extreme. He was pumped up, and he believed that the government of Saudi Arabia they were unworthy of ruling the kingdom because they worked with America. Mm -hmm. He believed that these people were kufar, they should be removed. Mm -hmm. So he started a campaign to overthrow the government, and they said, we will do it by taking over the Kaaba. Mm -hmm. Sheikh Muna Mukbil was blamed for that because some of the students that were involved in that during that time <laughs> were his students. Mm -hmm. So they circulated this document, and they said, these are the students of Mughbil bin Hadi al the Iyyub. They mm -hmm. arrested the Sheikh along with other people. They beat the Sheikh. And mm -hmm. what got the Sheikh released was they took the letter to Sheikh bin Baz. Sheikh bin Baz was one of the major teachers of Sheikh Mughbil during that time. And Sheikh Mughbil was from some of the top students of Sheikh bin Baz. And he was very fond of Sheikh Mughbil, Sheikh bin Baz. When he mm -hmm. had somebody read it to him because he was blind, he said, this is not the teachings, this is not the writings, this is not the doings of Muqbid bin Had al And based on mm -hmm. that testimony, they released him, deported him, kicked them back to Yemen. And that occasion, we heard Sheikh Muqbil talk about this. He said that Sheikh Rabia mm -hmm. and another man that was part of the fitna in America by, by the name of Falah Ibn Harabi and Harabi. These mm. two were involved with Juhayman and this overthrow of the kingdom. But mm. we we'll ask you, did Sheikh Falah Ibn Nafi and Harabi ever go to jail? No. Did Sheikh Rabir Ibn Had and Medkhali ever go to jail? No. So Sheikh Mubil clearly mentioned that Sheikh Rabia can a Jasus. He was an agent. Mm. Clearly mentioned this. Mm. And as time went on, Sheikh started to write books about Quran Muslimin and the mm. Shia and Jamaat al Tabligh. As some sources say that Sheikh Rabia was with all of these groups, so he knew them very well. Then he became someone upon the menhaj of the Salaf, and they raised him to be the Imam of the Dawah to Salafi. What's my mm -hmm. point? This came from Sheikh Mukbil, yani, back in the 70s when this yani, jumped off. But you see, if we talk about in light of the issue of us in America, people say we're crazy. How can we yep. say that? There's no way. I hate they always use people against people. That's no secret. And mm -hmm. Sheikh Muna Yahya al Hajjuri, mm -hmm. he once mentioned in the recordings on YouTube, the news played in Saudi Arabia, they have a whole segment. Is Sheikh Rabia Dai and Al Muhabbir? Is he a Dai? for Islam or is he an agent? They have this whole segment in Arabic. I wanted to send it to you, but I didn't. I'll get it to you. They play Sheikh Yahya saying that Sheikh Rabia phoned them in the match. Of course, it's after the time of Sheikh Mukbil and said, listen, we'll get you a million dollars because no doubt we were poor in the match. He said, mm -hmm. we'll get you a million dollars from the the head treasurer here in the kingdom, which is government, but mm. you got to do kata with kata with kata. You got to do this, that, and the third. Sheikh mm. clearly said, "Have a nice to be He said, "That's that's not our concern. We don't want your mm. money. We're not negotiating." Mm. He said it's known that he was yani he was yani an agent. Mm. You know, so and 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 wallahi, I'm I'm just being straight one hundred. This was the same thing 
with a hat. Yani, and he tried to talk about it and cover it up with uh, Sheikh Abu Toba. You know, he mm. talked and did the podcast and tried to clear himself. But he himself, when he was asked in the interview, when he was released, released from jail, when Care got him out, and he, they asked him, did you work for the CIA? Were you an agent? He was silent, and then he said, I'm not allowed to answer that, but I will say I did some covert operations. What the hell does covert operations mean? A birthday mm -hmm. party? <laughs> you know, you want to act like, you know, old, you know, but no, man, this is real. Yep. This is real, you see. And then when they get finished with you, now you're the top enemy, you're the worst person, you're dangerous. Allah So mm -hmm. this is, Yanni, what we understand really took place because those brothers, and then I'll let you make your next comment, in 1997. 96, mm -hmm. no, 90, 97. Mm -hmm. We were at a picnic, and there was some ongoing strife between some of the students. Basically, everybody wanted to be the man. Mm -hmm. Nobody liked the fact that we had Masjid Ahlu Sunnah, Maktabatu Ahlu Sunnah, Magrasatu Ahlu Sunnah, Marcus Islamia America, the Islamic Sunnah of America. And no black man supposed to be that powerful. And they'll talk about Sheikh Abu Muslimah. So they said, mm -hmm. we're going to prove to you when you come next year for Hajj that you're not Salafi. That's what they mm -hmm. said to him. I was standing right there. A young student. He's probably his first or second year. He still should be perfecting Arabic. He's arguing with Sheikh Abu Muslim about this. When he mm -hmm. went that year for Hajj, they had it set up to take him to the house of Sheikh Rabia. He had no idea he was going there, and the whole story is known. And this is when they got Sheikh Rabia to say he's a Hizbi. He's a Kadab. Mm -hmm. He's a Adu with the Dawah. He's a Hizbi, meaning he's not a man of the Sunnah. He is Yani yeah. Kadab. He's a person you can't take from because if a person is a known liar, you can't take from him. And Adu with the Dawah. He's the enemy to this Dawah. What Dawah? The Rabia movement or the Dao of La Ilaha Muhammad was what the house? Which one do you mean? Mm -hmm. And I will say, before I let you take the mic, most of the stuff, and I'm going to advise the people openly now, and just the Sheikh Mukbil used to talk bad about the Mamla. He did everything mm -hmm. just shy of saying they were Kufar. Before he died, he praised them. He took back his words. Maybe yep. they threatened him because government politics is real. Maybe they told mm -hmm. him, you know, you're here for, for treatment. You need to clean that up. The same way the Sheikh did that, I'm saying now, Sheikh Abu Muslima was right on most of the stuff he said back in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And people who saying he has issues, he's made big mistakes, they need to stop him. Mm -hmm. Because, wallahi, the mistakes that he made is not greater than the benefit that he brought. The mistakes mm -hmm. that he made can be changed and it can be wiped away. But this bit that it came from this issue that we're talking about, the Rabia movement can't be fixed. And we're reaping that right now. Sheikh, we have two decades of receipts of the, of the benefits and fruits of that uh, Rabia effect. You know, Jake, I will ask you for your, your helper if they can please turn off the YouTube because we're getting an echo, right? But um, it's look. probably for my mic. I'm sorry I'm getting the feedback because I want the people oh. in the message to hear. So we have a mic that's to the phone. Oh, okay, okay. So well, it's no problem. Leave it on. Then. Leave it on. <laughs> I or, or, it's the, or, it's the, or it's the feds that are listening, which they're going to get some dollar tonight because they already know <laughs> So it's okay. Inshallah, yes. So, when, I mean, I mean, when we when we hear, you know, Sheikh Mufa Rahimullah, and he's saying, uh, you know, you know uh, Sheikh Rabia who kind of jathus, right? Like Sheikh Rabia, he's an agent, you know. For us, we're not even surprised. Like this is not surprising news because he moves like an agent. Yeah. You know, you're talking about a man who called. Um, Abu Muhammad al be a jebeler of, of knowledge. Why would he do something like that? Why would he do something like that? You're talking about a man who, who, who said that don't go to the Hizbi Masjid, do your conference, 
because your children will be affected by the hisbees. So go to the hotel where they're selling alcohol and playing music and free mixing. Go to the Jewish hotel and make the Jews rich and the Muslims poor to, to prevent your, your children from becoming hisbees. Well, guess what? Our, ch our children were prevented from becoming hisbees and the majority of them left Islam. <laughs> you know what I mean? A good portion of them left Islam from that time to now. They're out in the streets shooting each other. This is his legacy. You're talking about a man, you know, who systematically, through him or his uh, his or his his cohorts, his fatawa, threw off every single black guy one by one by one by one by one. By one. All of them. Whether it was him or, as you mentioned, Sheikh Fala Harbi or him Allah, or, or whether it was um, uh, Sheikh Muhammad uh, Medkhali, or whether it was uh, Sheikh Ubaid al Jabari, or, or what, what, whoever it was. Him and his cohorts. And who, who, were, who was between them and the people bringing these fatawa? None other than Abu Khadija and uh, his people. You know what I mean? But again, there's a certain amount of accountability that the black community has to take. I have to say, I have to be real because these things are not new or foreign to black people. We've witnessed many times infiltrators coming into our communities and destroying every single piece of good that we've always set up. So now you have uh, simple-minded Negroes in the black community who are ready to divorce families, split up families based upon their positions of Sheikh Rabia, and that's real. And it's not like Sheikh Rabia doesn't know because he was told. He was told that Abu Khadija and them were breaking up marriages. He was told that straight up. And he had no words for Abu Khadija. So when we hear who are counting your we're like, we're like Adi, yeah. But <laughs> ninety nine percent, he is. We're pretty sure that he is. Yeah, well, I'm how, that. how you have all this work? You yeah. know how you have all this work for for Abu Osama and Dawood Adib and Bilal Phillips and and uh, uh, you know uh, Sheikh um, uh, uh, Billah Hakim Quick and and Kedwa Kedwa like how do you have all this work for Sheikh Tahir Wyatt and Shadid Muhammad? Shadid Muhammad never went to nobody's house and broke up their family and kidnapped people's wives and children, separated separated uh, you know children and wives from their husband. He never did that. Time. But no, but no, Abu Khadija no, is, is the is the vanguard of the Sunnah and the West. Yeah. Well, I tell you, somebody who's time. never has no history of studying anything in Islam. Yeah, yeah. But one of the problems, be all due respect, is, is our condition. You know, we were. We want we want to go about fifteen more minutes. And we're going to stop because. We started late, and I think people they want to go, whatever. I don't know. But, but no problem. You know, one of the things is our condition, Bilal. And, you know, Qadr Allah, Masha, Fa'ala. Allah wrote this for us. We're always the underdogs. You know, we're like this mm. of all of the movements. Anybody dangle a carrot and it looks like salvation, we went jump. And, you know, for the first time after the War B movement, you know, was so prosperous, you know, um, with regards to economics and, you know, family structure and building, the black community under the name of Sunni Islam, we were doing that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it felt good to like be, you know, upon something that's pure and clean. You know what I'm saying? And we were taught, you know, to respect scholarship, respect mm -hmm. elders, so we didn't see it coming, Bilal. We didn't. And we have to blame Allah Musta'an, the self-hatred syndrome, because Sheikh Rabia can't take all the credit. Well, mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you, you're, you're on like this. Right. Sorry to, to cut you off, Sheikh. I just want to interject. 
I want to interject real quick because I, want, I don't want to lose this point because this is a very yes. important point. Every other people group, they listen to those who've earned their stripes. You understand? The yes. people who learned their stripes, they just sit and listen. And those yes. who haven't earned their stripes, they just stay quiet. Yes. You feel me? Exactly. But black people always got an opinion of those those who know what they're actually talking about. You feel me? Yeah. So the ignorant rules in our community. Yes. Love. And the ones who, who actually know something, right, don't have any power. Yeah. So there yeah. comes a point of time where the people who are following, who are in the position of following, they have to look at themselves. Yeah. Because we have a 20-year resume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're being generous. Just a couple you of days ago. Yeah. Just a couple of days ago, the community got shot up. Yeah. Yeah. You know what so I mean? Not, it's more than 20 years. I mean, to be honest with you, I've been a Muslim 31 years. Mm -hmm. And this thing was brewing in the early 80s. Some people talked about it. And they said that, you know, it was made clear there's a movement coming out of Saudi Arabia. And even mm -hmm. Sheikh Al-Bani, he made the differentiation between Da'wah to Salafia. What does this mean? Da'wah, yani as Salafia calling the people to the way of the self. There's a difference between that and Salafi yani, movement or mm -hmm. yani, uh, Salafiyah as they call it today. It's a difference, you see? Mm -hmm. And he warned that people will fight against one another. Say, what about a person who, you know, defends the Quran Muslimin? What about a person? He says these statements, he seems the Quran. Sheikh al-Albani criticized that. He told them, have that. Lay them in Islam, be shaped men shake ah. That has nothing to do with Islam. Told them leave it. They kept trying to ask and force. Mm -hmm. Sheikh Al Bani, yes, he did. Yeah, and he mentioned Sheikh Rabia was Imam Jahu with Taadil. But people have to understand this context of the statement. They were talking about as it relates to reading the books and talking about the chains of narrators in the books today in our life. It was not mm -hmm. talking about. He's the leading man to say that person is an innovator. This person, Yani, is Muqtadi. This person is his be. No. Because mm -hmm. Imam al-Bani, everybody agrees, can an Imam of Sunnah. He was the Imam of Sunnah. And you can't be Imam of Sunnah without criticizing and praising. So how can he say now this is Sheikh Rabia absolute? So people took that and they ran with it. They put the Sheikh on a pedestal like he was, you know, like you say, uh, Rabia Christ, you know what he's going to say. Yeah, Rabia Christ medically. And we're going to be for Rabia Christ medically. I tell you, Allah mm -hmm. So, you know, this is but the, the problem. The, he was put on a pedestal, like And many people of knowledge say, if you read his books, it's not the spectacular about what mm -hmm. he brought in the books and this and that. Many people said he was not from the Kibaro Ulama, like people say, oh, he's from the Kibaro. When we talk about the major scholars, they're known. If you go yep. to the members that can ask about him, nobody says he's from the major scholar. They might say he's an Arab, but from the Kibaro, mm. this became something amongst us. Like they said, Sheikh Ubey the Jabari, mm. a high school teacher, he's from the Kibaro. And, and this 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 is how these foreigners came into our communities and they confused us. Yeah, they did this, yeah, did they yeah, this yeah. intentionally. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Right, and because yeah. we have this sense of hatred syndrome, anybody that is not us that doesn't look like us can come into our community and tell us who we can and can't follow. And that's exactly what happened. Copy and paste yeah. model. They tell they yeah. give us our leaders and tell us yeah. who's going to be our leaders. When we're yeah. progressing, they came in to destroy that progress, and yeah. we see the fruits of it now. Yeah, you yeah. They, they, so now when you have your, your people now, our people shooting each other in their thobes and whatever, fighting on Eid and whatnot, talking about Dawa to Salafi, Dawa to Salafi is the hub. Well, guess what? Your your 15, 20 year resume shows the condition of your congregation. And the condition of your congregation is a witness against your theology. So you can keep your Dawah to Salafiyah. Because what we understand of Dawah to Salafiyah is not what you're practicing. That's a different religion. You will you you turn a blind eye to criminality in order for people to 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 uh what you would call it. 
give you the biscuit and whatnot. There is yeah, no the progress power, in the community the because of you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and again, you know, I'm just saying that the Sheikh can't take all of that credit. You know, we, you know, Wallah Mustan, we look back, many groups, they had those same ingredients, you know, to you know, bring us down. And so now, what's the solution? Where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? When we hear people talking like that guy in the lecture that day, these guys are new people. They, weren't, they haven't even been Muslim long enough. What do they know yeah. about yani, this issue? When you're talking about, you know, the society is still uh, very um, tense with evil. And, you know, we still have the day-to-day -day struggles just barely being Muslim. What do we yeah. know, you know, when we have somebody arguing about this way in another land and we hear, you know, and, and, and like you know, we said, those people, they're not worried about us. If you call the shit now and say there was a shooting in Philly, there was a shooting mm -hmm. in St. Louis, some people got mm -hmm. murdered in, in, in Brooklyn, some people got mm -hmm. killed in Newark, some people got shot in this place. The shape not gonna, you know, like lose no sleep or whatever. Mm -hmm. The longest time. So, mm -hmm. you know, the same thing. Why we gotta keep dealing with this issue? Because the issue of low self-esteem, you the issue of mm. lack of respect for ourselves, the issue of being confused, exactly. you know, and this is, you know, what we're dealing with. And all of those leaders you mentioned, well, we don't know mm. where they are today. Hamid Mugrabi, mm -hmm. this one, that one. And this is another mm -hmm. reason people say they must have been working, you know, for governments, because once the job is done, they disappear. Mm -hmm. They don't stay around and last to the end. You know, they have a job to do. And once they complete their job, that's it. That's mm -hmm. it. You see what I'm saying? So, Allah, you know, this is um, unfortunate, but, you know, another one bites the dust. And I'll say many of the brothers who talk bad about this issue, so all oh, those brothers, they have the um, extremism with them. These people, they destroyed this and that. If you gave them the opportunity, they would do the same thing all over again. Yeah, many of our people that criticize Salafi publication and uh, Abu Khadija and Sheikh Rabia, he took the whole Yemen off the Manhaj. How do you take a whole country and make a Muqtada mm. in a whole country? Mm -hmm. But if they had the chance, Wallahi, for fame, you know, for money, mm. for, for you know, status, you know, mm -hmm. to put people down so you could be up, they would do the same thing. So we can't give the shape all of that um, power and ability, but you know, definitely governments have their hands in it. Just like the fall of the match, we know that the co countries were involved. You know, they were involved in that. You know what I'm saying? No doubt. The destruction no of the doubt. It's recorded. You know that Muslim countries, you know, um, gave monies to Iran. You know, like similarly what we had here in Panama mm -hmm. and Colombia with the drug war during the Reagan era. It's clear who gave money from Saudi Arabia, you know, to mm -hmm. buy the cocaine and all of this evil. You see what I'm yep. saying? So nobody should be mm -hmm. too alarmed, but definitely we have to move on. We can't allow these things like those critics do talk about us to make us talk about this every day, every mm -hmm. night. But I think it needed to be highlighted because definitely that person wanted to know what was the status of Sheikh Rabia, how should we treat his mm. status, respecting him. So this is part of what goes with his status. This is part of his portfolio. You know, you take it, you do what you want with it, you know, you leave it, you know, whatever. But, you know, if we're going to talk about a person, as the Prophet Sallam, you mentioned, that of Qadha, yani Talatha, judges are three types. Two of them will begin mm. the fire, one will begin the Jannah. Sheikh Mukbil quoted this hadith in some of his writings, said that this hadith is a refer to Allah ibn Mas'ud. It's in the Muslim mm -hmm. of Ahmad. And he said the Prophet Sallam said, the That's one right. who knows the truth, but he judges against the truth. The one who's mm -hmm. ignorant and he judges against that ignorance, I mean, he judges, pardon me, with that ignorance, those two will be in the fire. The one who knows the truth, but he judges against the truth, is going to be in the fire. The one who's <laughs> ignorant and he judges on that ignorance is going to be in the fire. And then mm. the prophet said that the one that will be in the Jannah, he knows the truth and he judges by that truth. 
We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who know the truth, accept the truth, and judge by the truth. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill our community, the Muslim community at large, and particularly the African American community, the Muslim community, to heal us. We ask Allah yeah. subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us strength to go on after this calamity. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah. to have mercy on us all, to guide us to right, to make us of those who repent. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to incline to a Sheikh Rabia, make him from those who make Toba, make him from those who mend these problems and mistakes before he dies. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of those that were involved, to bless them and to guide their hearts to make Toba, to repair this evil before they die. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us all, to protect our hearts, our tongues, our limbs from evil, and to make us die upon that which is al-Islam and the Sunnah in its right um, context and its right practice as recorded and mentioned in the Sunnah of our Prophet um, Allah, Sallam, we ask Allah um, to make us upright and not be based in the land. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from worshiping personalities and individuals to worship him alone. Um, so, I, I want to apologize again, you know, we were late and had technical difficulties, but inshallah, I think what we presented was um, enough. There may be some brothers here in the masjid that have some comments that uh, maybe those statements will be beneficial, you know, not book reports, but you know, something the rest of the time is beneficial. <laughs> It's good. And I, I will leave I'll leave a link for the uh, the people on live right now if they want to make comments as well they definitely deserve it right yes. so I I'd like to thank the people who who um who uh, came and and waited and uh, I'll, I'll leave a link for you guys if you want to leave comments as well inshallah no and no. shake shake before you no. leave I just want to say that Alhamdulillah you're in a, a privileged position to be you know, an imam and a respected elder in the community. And what the people want, or, or, or actually not even want, it's even more than want. Want isn't even strong enough word. They're yearning for change in their entire lives. You understand? That they're really yearning for this. Families are completely destroyed. Kids are in the streets. And there's no shortage of work. In the, in the black community at all. You know what I mean? We have been abandoned by our, our, our governments. We have been orphaned by the Muslim community at large. And all we have is us. We have us and we have Allah and that's it. So with your position and your the position of being like that, we're requesting that you know you use your your uh, networking and ask the people to come those people with skills and who can do things right so that we can do something better for our community right so that we can offer our our youth education and jobs and these type of things and you know what i mean and perhaps uh farming and land you know, there's no shortage of work we have many people with mental issues drug issues uh sexual abuse issues so many right we have marriage issues we have issues with with uh single parenthood there's not nobody in the community should be bored everybody can do something yes every single person can do something because you know the people you you have because you're in, in your map right right yeah. you, what we should be doing is giving the people an alternative to the life that they're living right now because what the what the enemy wants, they want us to be fighting over these rudimentary, arbitrary issues like shake or be. They want us killing each other in the streets. This is this is this is the, their plan for us. But you know, for in whom yahidu kaida, for yahidu kaida, right? You know, so verily they plot in the plan, and Allah plots and plans, right? No, Zakwallah, yes. may Allah aid us, make it easy, you know, Allah. Yes. The only thing I can say is, Hasbunallah, and then we'll kill. And for us and the best protector, we seek his help and we seek uh, his aid to work together. And Allah, we have to start doing 
um, maybe monthly meetings, you know, maybe on Zoom to brainstorm, you know, what we can do on all fronts, you know, because without economics, we busted. And they killed that too. Exactly. The whole bookstore movement, you know, they monopolized that. Mm -hmm. People don't want to give no more because they lost trust. You know, you mm -hmm. talk about the issue of the streets. Yeah, you know, we Muslim, but these are our streets. We got to have a hand in the streets too. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. We have to, you know, be able to um, feed our people when they're hungry, give mm -hmm. some type of monetary assistance when they need it. So we got a lot of work to do, but nobody's going to do it for us except us. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy, aid us, and protect us from our evil ways. Allah most time. You know, lastly, I will say, Bilal, mm -hmm. we have to um, learn the religion best we can on whatever individual mm -hmm. level and ability we have. And we have to, you know, again, be obedient. You know, we left being obedient. You know, all of this mm -hmm. happened to us, you know, but we don't talk about the sins and mishaps that we have, mm -hmm. you know, they contributed. You know, we have to be upright. If we're upright, Allah won't leave us for life. If we are exactly. steadfast, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will aid us. And if we are sincere, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless our efforts. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be sincere, upright, steadfast. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he is the only one that can help us to help us. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his help and mercy. Sakmana khayna wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay, Ikhwan. So, final words before I go as well, inshallah. Uh, the reason why we're doing this live stream on uh, the infamous features as you know uh the features has been struck by youtube for telling the truth <laughs> okay uh, i did a live uh uh reaction to muhammad hijab and his experience to getting certain things that we won't mention because we don't want this channel to get struck by youtube but certain things that the you know the government is pushing right now in terms of health public health and they struck my channel. But what I want you guys to understand is that we as Muslims, you know, we're so weak and pathetic that we have to depend on platforms of our enemies in order to get our messaging out. And furthermore, we use our enemies' platforms to be enemies of each other. And even if we were to have our own platforms, we wouldn't support it. And for sure, for hell, hell of a sure, the enemy won't support it. So it's so important that you support this channel. You you support the features, subscribe to the infamous features, the the mirror site. You know, support me on Patreon and in and uh, memberships and whatnot. Share, like, subscribe. It's so important because once it's gone, it's gone. It's not a joke, man. It's not. It's, it's a very serious thing. You understand? So the enemy is light years ahead of us. So we have to be smart, we have to be intelligent, and we have to get working, we have to get busy. And the easiest thing you can do the, is simply share videos like this. Subscribe to the, this channel, the infamous features, subscribe to the features, share the videos. That, that's so simple. There's no shortage of work for us in the community. So I just wanted to share that with you before we go. Make sure you share this video everywhere. Share it everywhere. You understand? And uh, make sure that um, you, you subscribe to the infamous features. And we do have another mirror site coming up as well on library as well, inshallah. So thank you again. We apologize for the lateness. And we thank you so much for attending. And may Allah reward you and bless you. Like, subscribe, share. Hit us up on Patreon. Subhanakallah, behamdik. Wa shadalai ant. Wa stafurka wa tubu ilayk.